What's up, everybody? I'm Thomas J. Blizzard, and welcome to The Right Mindset. Did you know that the second act sag uh, has a similar thing in the third act? It's called the Plateau of Ascent. So that brings us to today's lessons, which is conquering the third act, elevating your stories, climax, and a resolution. So... As we delve into the art of storytelling and uncover the secrets to captivating writing, am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Um, in today's lesson, we're going to tackle a crucial aspect of narrative structure that often goes overlooked, the plateau of ascent in the third act. Now, just as a story's middle can sag without careful attention, the final act faces its own unique challenges. It's the climactic stretch where all elements of your story should converge from character arcs, plot lines, and thematic inquiries, culminating in a satisfying resolution. But how do we maintain the narrative's momentum and ensure that our story doesn't lose its intensity as it nears the conclusion? <laughs> so that's what we're going to go through. And so why is that important? Well, look. I would say it's crucial for any narrative because it's where all the story threads come together for a final impactful resolution. Now, the Plateau of Ascent refers to the challenge of maintaining narrative momentum right up to the climax, ensuring that the story doesn't lose its intensity or focus on its approach uh, as a conclusion clues, concludes. Now, this part of your story is vital because it delivers the payoff for all the emotional, thematic, and narrative investments your audience has made up to this point. So a well-crafted third act brings closure to character arcs, resolutions, central conflicts, and addresses the thematic questions raised throughout the story. Because we all know every story has some theme, even if you purposefully did it or not. So leaving your audience without a sense of satisfaction and completion. <laughs> Today, we're basically going to explore the strategies to overcome plateau of ascension and ensure that your story has a climax. Now, the objective to this lesson today will be to recognize the challenges of the third act uh, through discussion, master climactic structure, uh, develop a resolution, okay, techniques, uh, enhance thematic cohesion just by mere you know, discussion, and uh, hopefully we look at it uh, in a good way. So, as always, I like to do one of these bad boys. Boop, let's try... Okay, a quick overview of Act Tree. Act Tree brings the narrative to a close. Okay, Res uh, resolving the conflict. Uh, the set. <laughs> Rewind. Act Three brings the narrative to a close, resolving the central conflict and character arcs in a way that is consistent with the story's themes and the protagonist's journey. The climax and resolution should leave the reader with a sense of satisfaction, understanding the consequences of the protagonist's journey and the story's thematic implications. As you can see here, Act 3 is known as The Resolution, and it has three sections. Victory Seems Impossible, Section 7. Section 8 is The Protagonist Finds Power. And Section 9, The Protagonist Fights and wins. So, um, now each section has a purpose. I'm not sure if you know that. So we're going to go into it. Boom. Where are we? Where are we? Section seven. Sorry. Should I, I should have been on the ball. This should have been taken care of, right? Okay. So each section has a purpose. All right. Let's look at that purpose. Boop. So we don't give away too much. So this is act three. All right, section seven, victory seems impossible. All right. Now, we know that uh, section seven has three plot points. Plot point 90, oh, um, without going too, too much into it, uh, this section's purpose is ultimately that victory seems impossible. 
And the objective of Section 7 is to heighten the tension and stakes, presenting the protagonist with a seemingly insurmountable challenge that tests their resolve, skills, growth, and the utmost. All right. Now, as you can see, I'm not going to go too much into each of these plot points since uh, the video before this, uh, several videos before this, kind of go into this a little bit deeper, especially the updated 27 chapter outline slash 27 plot point outline. But section seven has plot point 19, which is the protagonist faces significantly difficult trials. That is something they have uh, basically never experienced before. Then it's plot point 20, which is another plot twist or pinch. Uh, the protagonist experiences a completely unexpected event, making all things worst. Okay. Also known as the plot twist. And then uh, we have this darkest moment, which is plot twist or pinch leads to the darkest moment. The thought of success is incomprehensible. Now that brings us to uh, section eight. Section eight, the protagonist finds power. And the objective of this section is to depict the protagonist's journey from despair to renewed determination, showcasing their growth and preparing them for the final confrontation. Now, this section has three plot points. Plot point 22, which is having hit rock bottom. The protagonist remembers their desire to succeed. They find power within. Plot point 23, after deciding they can do it, the protagonist takes action. Okay. And plot point 24, this is the converge. All right. This is the power within that leads to the final battle. Now, converge basically... Uh, again, you, you don't always have to have all the subplots basically conclude here, um, but this is usually where a lot of the, the narrative thread lines kind of get, you know, wrapped up before we go into the last three plot beats of Section 9, which is the protagonist fights and win. Now, the objective of Section 9 is to deliver the climax of the story where the protagonist confronts the central conflict and to provide a resolution that ties up the narrative threads. And real quick, you have plot point 25, which is the protagonist has the final battle. This is basically the battle begins. Whatever their struggle or their last confrontation is, it doesn't have to be a physical fisticuffs. It could be mental, emotional, spiritual, etc. Plot point 26, boom. This is where the protagonist succeeds or fails. If they fail, usually it's uh, because of a fatal flaw in their character. This is the climax am i right um this is really where uh the last bit of fighting happens this is the final the final uh, hoorah boom boom ba boom who wins who loses okay and then of course we have the resolution which is the resolution plot point 27 where uh, it's the resolution or immediate reaction to the protagonist's uh decision in the last chapter okay now, before we go any further, let's talk about some tips. All right. Here is tip number one. Uh, when you're outlining your saga, uh, when you're outlining the third act, your saga, when you're outlining the third act, okay, a good tip to follow is deliver a compelling climax. Focus on it having some strengths to it. So the three things to think about with develop uh, delivering a uh, complex climax is this. Fulfill your promises. Ensure that the climax of your story delivers on the promises made to your readers throughout Act 1 and 2. The climax should be the natural culmination of the conflicts and character development you've been building up, providing a resolution that feels both surprising and inevitable. Showcase character growth. The climax is the moment where your protagonists grow. Uh, your protagonist's growth is put to the test. The climax is the moment where your protagonist's growth is put to the test. Use this moment to highlight how they've changed since the beginning of the story, demonstrating their newfound strengths, a wisdom, or resolve in facing the final challenge. And finally, in the first tip, maximize emotional impact. 
The stakes should be at their highest, and the emotional payoff should match the buildup. Consider the emotional journey you want your readers to experience and craft your climax to elicit those feelings, whether it's excitement, fear, sadness, or triumph. And those are three things you can do to deliver a compelling climax. Now, a, third, a second tip is provide a satisfying resolution. Think about how it all comes together at the end. Make sure, A, you tie up loose ends. After the climax, take the time to resolve subplots if they have not been so done, uh, whatever that means, in uh, the converged uh, plot point. Um, and while you're resolving these subplots, you want to also answer lingering questions. Readers should feel that no narrative thread has been left hanging unless intentionally unresolved for thematic reasons or potential sequels. Okay. B. Show the new status quo. Now, remember, the story begins in the ordinary world, which is their status quo. That status quo gets interrupted in the inciting incident, and the story proceeds. At the end, with the resolution, you want to show the new status quo. This is where you illustrate how the events of the story have changed the world, the characters, and especially your protagonist. Now, what does their life look like after the climax? How has uh, their life changed? Most importantly, how have their relationships and goals evolved? C, leave room for reflection. Include moments for both the characters and readers to reflect on the journey and its outcomes. This can provide a deeper understanding of the story's theme and the character's arcs adding layers to the narrative's conclusion. Now, that doesn't mean they literally have to sit there and pontificate or, you know, have a moment where they're, you know. But if you think about The Dark Knight uh, Rises, I'm just saying. Spoiler alert. Alfred is uh, contemplating the potential of the future. Uh, he may or may not have just seen Bruce Wayne with uh, Selina. And um, I'm just saying, it's reflective. Okay. Final, final tip, number three, emphasize theme and character arc completion, which means that A, highlight the theme. Use Act 3 to reinforce the central themes of your story. How do the climax and resolution reflect or challenge the thematic questions you've raised? Make sure your ending feels thematically coherent with the rest of the narrative. B. Complete character arcs. Ensure that your character arcs come to a satisfying conclusion, whether they have achieved their goals, learned important lessons, or transformed in significant ways. The end of Act 3 should clearly convey the culmination of their journey. Let your characters feel like they had a beginning, a middle, and end, right? C. Consider the emotional journey. Overall, reflect on the emotional journey you want your readers to take in Act 3. Now, from this, you do it from the tension of the climax to the resolution's aftermath. Consider how the sequence of events and character developments contribute to the overall emotional arc of the story. Now, by focusing on these elements, writers can create a third act that not only resolves the story's conflict uh, and character arc, but also leaves a lasting impact on the reader, bringing the narrative to a powerful, memorable conclusion because it has elements. Now, before we go on, Please subscribe if you haven't done so already and you really love what's going on. You're like, yeah, just hit the subscribe button and pop that bell icon so you don't miss out. Let's keep going. Now we're going to go into section seven and we're going to look at the plot points themselves. Okay. Boop. All right. There we go. Oh. Uh, boop, boop. Uno momento, por favor. Beep, 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 beep. All right. Do, 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 do. All right. Boop, boop, 
All right, so now we're going to dive into the actual plot points a little bit more. Uh, as you can see with plot point 19 from section 7. Okay, the purpose of this, I have it on the screen just so you could read along with me. If you're just listening, feel free to. If you want, you could always pause the screen. More importantly, this information is in the link that's provided in the comments and the description of the video. It's all free. You don't have to sign up for anything. You don't have to give me your emails. You just go to the folder and you download. More importantly, I update these uh, documents that are in there. Some of them are specifically honed to the lessons I'm giving. Others are, um, you know, I have the templates in there for outlines. I have templates for treatments, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, okay. Section seven, victory seems impossible. Plot point 19, the protagonist faces significantly difficult trials. That is something they never expected before. This is the calm before the storm. Now, the purpose of this is to set up the final conflict by presenting obstacles that push the protagonist to their limits, emphasizing the gravity of the situation and the slim chances of success. What are some of the key elements? Well, it says here the high stakes, the intense pressure and the looming threat of failure forcing the protagonist to muster all their resources and resolve all right here we go so an example of this if you've been following along with the last two videos in this uh sequential order of act one act two and act three we're following dan brown's the da vinci code and it says here that at uh, Roslyn Chapel, they find themselves at the heart of the Grail mystery, with all paths converging on this ancient site. Plot point 20, which is the protagonist. Oh, this is the another plot twist or pinch. The protagonist experiences a completely unexpected event, Ooh, making it all worse. So what is the purpose? The purpose is to in introduce a final twist or pinch that complicates the protagonist's path to resolution, often by revealing new information or presenting an unforeseen challenge. Key elements you should keep in mind here is a surprising development that escalates the conflict, tests the protagonist's commitment, and requires a significant adjustment to their plan. The Dan Brown example is, well, they learn that Sophia, right, Sophie, uh, is a descendant of Jesus Christ and Mary Magdalene. I thought uh, Jesus was the Greek god. All right. Anyway, uh, making so when they uh, they discover that she might be related to Jesus Christ and Mary of the Magdalene, uh, it's making her the living embodiment of the Holy Grail's bloodline. Ooh, that's scary. Plot point 21 leads to the darkest moment. The thought of success is incomprehensible in this dark, dark moment. All right. So what's the purpose? The purpose, the purpose is to bring the protagonist to their lowest point where all seems lost and the goal appears unattainable, emphasizing the narrative's emotional depth and the protagonist's arc. All right. Elements that you should uh, have in this plot point are emotional turmoil, a sense of defeat, and the protagonist's confrontation with their inner demons or greatest fears, setting the stage for the transformation, uh, decision, or revelation. If you haven't read Dan Brown, <laughs> basically in this plot point the revelation of sophie's true heritage brings a profound sense of duty and danger as they realize the implications of this secret being revealed to the world <laughs> section eight section eight the power the protagonist finds the power okay which leads to Plot point 22, having hit rock bottom, the protagonist remembers their desire to succeed, finds power within. The purpose of this, listen, I know it's purpose. <laughs> I used to say Target all the time, and uh, this person that I used to hang out with was like, you know it's Target, right? And I was like, yeah, but it's fancier than Walmart, so it's Target. Um, the pur the purpose is to highlight a pivotal moment of clarity or inspiration that renews the protagonist's resolve. 
often tied to a deeper understanding of themselves or the central theme of the story. Key elements. Inner strength, a significant realization, uh, or a motivational turning point that galvanizes the protagonists to face the final challenge. If you've seen Dan Brown or not, he's a very lovely author. Nice guy. And he wrote a book called The Da Vinci Code, and this is what happens. Armed with the truth of her lineage, Sophie finds a new sense of identity and purpose. Porpoise. Uh, well, Langdon gains a deeper understanding of faith and he study. All right. <laughs> Plot point 23. After deciding they can do it, you can do it. Uh, the protagonist takes action. The purpose of this is uh, to show the protagonist actively taking steps towards the final confronta confrontation. Equipped with new insights, resolve, early alliances. Exciting. Now, some of the key elements that you really should pay attention to in this plot point is preparation for the final battle. You know, it's coming. It's about to happen. You know, we have, it's going to be there. And you want to have strategic planning and rallying of the allies, maybe uh, signifying the protagonist's readiness to confront thy conflict. I'm just saying. All right. And Dan Brown wrote in the Da Vinci Code stuff that equals that together they resolve to protect Sophie's secret and decide how to deal with the Grail's legacy in a way that honors wishes and the truth. I'm sorry. Uh, a grail's legacy in a way that honors Sanyer's wishes and the truth. All right. <laughs> Sometimes you just need, you know, uh, text to speech to help you. All right. Okay. Plot point 24, the converge power within leading to the final battle. The purpose is to bring together the main plot, subplots and character arcs converging them uh, together uh, towards the story's climax where the protagonist's journey is put to the ultimate test. Convergence. Which is key elements, a sense of convergence uh, and combination. Okay. Um, where all narrative threads are poised to be resolved in the final confrontation. Whew. All right. Da Vinci Code, the storylines converge as Langdon and Sophie, now aware of the full scope of the conspiracy, make peace with their roles in the Grails saga, which brings us to section nine, the protagonist fights and wins. Now, plot point 25 is the protagonist. 25 is the protagonist has one last battle. <laughs> Sorry, I have to entertain myself, right? The purpose of this is to ultimately present the final showdown or climax where the protagonist faces off against the antagonist or central conflict, testing everything they have learned and become. Now, keep in mind, that doesn't mean it has to be a villain. It could be an antagonistic force like nature, self, whatever. Uh, it could be emotional. It could be spiritual. It could be uh, physical. But it doesn't have to actually be like they fight somebody. Key elements. The ultimate test of the protagonist's character, their skills, and resolve with high stakes and dramatic tension. How do you add high stakes uh, and, and dramatic tension? Well, ultimately, ultimately, just keep piling on. You know, if you're like, you know what, they have this one challenge, then what is another challenge that's in that challenge? Or what's a challenge to get to that challenge? Every challenge creates higher stakes because they have more and the more clocks you create you know like we have to get this person the vaccine for the flu <laughs> or they will die and uh we only have an hour anyway dan brown wrote that the final battle is more intellectual and emotional than physical as langdon and sophie confront the moral and ethical dilemmas presented 
by the Grail's secrets. We're almost there. Plot point 26. The protagonist sees, kids or fails. If they fail, usually it's because of a fatal flaw in their character. By the way, an example of this might be... Um, what would not... Well, you know what? Uh, uh, where are you? There's a movie that's... Uh, uh, um, it has Edward Norton in it. And it was like his first film. And, uh, oh, Primal Fear. Primal Fear. And uh, uh, in that movie, um, Richard Gere's character loses. Spoiler alert. Even though he wins the case, he wins the case, but he loses uh, not realizing that Edward Norton, had a, the character was uh, faking his uh his did all right um okay with that said though what is the purpose of plot point 26 to resolve the central conflict revealing whether the protagonist succeeds or fails and to show whoa there's an alert uh i'm sorry the purpose is to resolve the central conflict, revealing whether the protagonist succeeds or fails, and to show the consequences of their actions and decisions throughout the story. Key elements. All right. Uh, the outcome of the climax, the protagonist's success or failure, and the implications of that outcome for the protagonist and other guys. Now, basically what I'm saying here, like the things that I'm giving out here, like the key elements and the purpose, it means to kind of like hone down on them. Work on... Uh, taking it and brainstorming how you can elevate the outcome of the climax. How can you enhance the values of the climax? You know, if the protagonist succeeds or fails, you want to kind of like dig deeper into that and think about the implications of that outcome for the protagonist and other characters. So it can kind of influence like the, the ripple effect can push out and influence people, you know? Uh, the same thing with the purpose, you know, yeah, the purpose is to resolve, you know, the, the central conflict and it's supposed to reveal whether the protagonist, protagonist succeeds or fails and ultimately show the consequences of their actions and decisions throughout the story. Right. But what does that mean? What does the resolution of the conflict look like and why does it look that way? You know, revealing whether the protagonist succeeds or fails. You know, obviously there has to be an outcome and the audience reads, oh, hey, he su they succeeded or they failed. But what does the success mean and what does a failure mean, right? And now you're creating the, the stakes. So what would failure look like? Let that be known. Let what failure could be, especially if you're going to write that they succeed, but vice versa, you know? What is it that they learned about themselves? What was the moral conclusion in their failure? Things like that. All right. Dan Brown says, uh, well, he doesn't say anything. He, he wrote this. Uh, Sanya, that's how you say it. All right. So uh, Langdon deciphers the ultimate clue left by Sanya, who's also known as the teacher, I believe, leading him to the Louvre. Is that the Louvre? Am I saying that wrong? Because I'm terrible at yeah, or Louvre, where he realizes the true meaning of uh, and location of the Holy Grail. And the final plot point is 27, the resolution or immediate reaction to the protagonist's decision. The purpose of this is to provide closure to the story, tying up loose ends and showing the aftermath of the climax, including how it has changed the world and the characters. You can look at each of these uh, individually and just say to yourself, how do I enhance my story? How do I provide true closure? You know, and you say to yourself, did I definitely tie up all the loose ends, which is the second part, right? Did the characters come out learning something or were they just victorious? And if they were just victorious, how does it implement their future? How have they changed from the beginning of the story, et cetera, et cetera. You want to look closer at these, these purposes which then takes us to the elements, which is the new status quo, the protagonist character's growth and how they've been changed by the journey and a sense of closure or continuation for the characters in the story, 
world, if, especially if there's going to be sequels or companion books and stuff. But you want to look at those things and really give those story elements some time. You know, it's, it's one thing just kind of writing like a like an outline generalization, like they are victorious and they, you know, walk down the aisle and they get their, uh, you know, amulets and uh, medals, except for Chewie. You know, and then and and then, you know, but then there's like, how do we look at that in a greater way? You know, it's OK also to do that kind of ending. But sometimes in a book, <laughs> we are a little bit closer because a film or television is a visual medium and we can become emotionally satisfied by the visuals of it and the music, the thematic music and stuff. Music changes a lot. You know, if your books, if you open the page, and it's like <laughs> dun, 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 you'd be like, oh, this is a crazy book. Right. But you'd be affected by the music in one way or another unless uh, you're not listening to it, unless you put it on zero volume anyway um so you have to uh you have to think of these elements and hone in on them what is the new status quo why is this the new status status quo how does it influence these characters because now you you can get into their heads you can do internal thoughts you could do their comparisons you could do uh you could allow their behavior to be changed, but in a novel, you're you're allowing the words on the page to be a little bit more intimate, especially if you're in first person. Uh, I would say somewhat if you're in third person um, limited, maybe not so much in omniscient because you're a little further out, but uh, definitely in second person because you walk up to Princess Leia and she gives you <laughs> your metal. Anyway, if you've read the book you know that the novel concludes with langdon and sophie having protected the secret of the grail ensuring its safety and the preservation of its legacy while also coming to terms with their personal transformation okay oh i'm so sorry i didn't do the uh anyway that's the second time i did that i don't whatever we learn we grow all right, practicing outline. Now that we've delved into the intricacies of crafting a compelling third act, what should go into the plot points, etc., I encourage you, the viewer, the writer, the author, to put these principles into action by start revising a work in progress or conceptualizing a new story altogether, focusing specifically on its climax and resolution. Reflect on the journey your characters have undertaken and the narrative threads, threads you've woven. Now, how will these elements converge in the third act? Experiment with different scenarios for your story's climax, considering how one uh, aligns with the character's arc and themes you've developed. I would also like to add uh, in my practice notes, try and try again. Try to fail. Try to fail your practice. Try to fail your stories. Try to fail the ideas. Um, a, it allows you to work your solution finding skill. So this idea failed. How do I make it work? But more importantly, failure means learning. Failure means, okay, I went to failure. I recognize this didn't work. And now I can work on fixing it. But additionally, when you are experimenting with different scenarios, Throw everything out there onto the page. It's okay. Try things. You know why? Because you can change it. It's just because you write something down does not mean that you're not allowed to change it. Like you can't be like, oh, you know, they walked into the room. Oh, now they now they had they walk into the room like I'm stuck. <laughs> you know, like you're allowed to be like, no, it's gonna be a new room. In fact, they walk into the canyon. <laughs> anyway, I want you to challenge yourself to escalate. The tension and stakes in the lead up to the climax, ensuring that your characters face their greatest challenges yet, because then you can carefully plan your story's resolution, aiming for a conclusion that feels both inevitable and surprising. Because as you work, you got to uh, keep your story's themes in focus, ensuring that the third act serves as a powerful culmination of the thematic exploration. Remember, your themes are important. If you are not writing specific themes like you're, you know, like, what are the themes of your stories? You're not seeing your themes. It's good to go back and read your first and second acts and say to yourself, what is it that's standing out here? Am I seeing found family elements? Am I seeing uh, narrative threads of loyalty and challenging those 
themes of loyalty. That's how you definitely know you have themes in your story is if you're presenting ideas and then pushing back on those ideas. Now your story is effectively working through themes, you know, and it could also be love romance. If like everyone's falling in love and there's no challenge and everyone's like, I love you. We should get married. Let's get married. Like the theme of marriage and love is there. But if you challenge that now, your book has deeper themes of love, marriage and romance. Um, the other thing about practice is you want to share your third act outlines. You want to uh, share the climactic scenes. You want to share your resolutions in the comments of uh, 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 share, you know, like um, with, share your ideas with other people, uh, with writing groups, etc. cetera. Uh, you want to discuss the choices you made and the challenges you and challenges you've encouraged in your story. Uh, feedback from fellow writers can provide invaluable insights that help refine your approach. It's important. Remember, there is a difference between critique and opinion. Opinion is like I would have had them ride in on horses. Uh, critique is. Um, I didn't understand what was going on here or uh, do they love each other? Cause like, I thought they were like were enemies in the last couple chapters, but now it feels like they loved each other. Like that insight is true to your perspective, but like a critique of there should be uh, monkeys in this room <laughs> is not because there should be monkeys in this room is the story that person wants to write. <laughs> Critique should always focus on the purpose or goals of the author's mission. Like, what is it there? What's the story they're trying to tell? You know, the narrative they're trying to tell. Anyway, remember that the third act is your opportunity to leave a lasting impression on your readers, delivering the emotional and narrative payoff that all the preceding chapters have promised. So take the time to craft this part of your story with care and attention. Final thoughts. This this is actually one of my favorite parts, by the way. I love the final thoughts. So as we draw the curtain on our exploration of the third act, remember that the final chapters of your story are where the magic of storytelling truly comes to life. Oh, my. It's in these concluding moments that the journeys of your character, the twists of your plot, and the depth of your themes converge to leave a lasting impression and impact on your readers. Now, crafting a memorable ending is an art that requires balance, emotion, and precision, ensuring that the promises made throughout the narrative are fulfilled in a way that resonates deeply and authentically. The third act is your opportunity to elevate uh, your narrative from simply being told to being remembered. It's where the heart of your narrative beats the loudest, echoing the trials, triumphs, and transformations that have unfolded. Now, so as you pen those final words, pour your passion, your insight, and your creativity into every word, every page. Make each moment count. This is the end. This is the final couple of feet. You are about to hit the end, the conclusion of this novel. Don't slow down now. Don't back off now. Put the time in. Let the climax be a testament to your character's journeys. And let the resolution bring a sense of closure that is both satisfying and thought-provoking. Your story's ending is your parting gift to your readers. It's your chance to leave them moved, inspired, and perhaps changed. As storytellers, we have the power to invoke emotions, provoke thoughts, and touch hearts. So embrace this power, wield it with care, and always strive to craft endings that not only conclude the narrative journey, but also elevate it to a timeless tale that lingers in the minds and hearts of your audiences. So remember, Every ending is a new beginning for your characters, for your readers, and for you as a writer. Keep weaving your narratives, my friends, with the courage to explore the wisdom to resolve and the creativity to enchant. Next video in this series, we are actually starting a new series in the outline series known as 
uh, outlining a book series or saga. It will be part one. It'll show you how to take a main plot idea, right? And break it up into a series or a saga. So it'll show you how to take one general idea that you have. You might have a story idea and you say, oh, this fits, this could fit one book. But how do you expand that one idea into a series or a saga? Keep in mind that video will also give you the rules and tools to make a series of saga, even if you didn't start off with one single narrative idea. So that should be fun. Question What do you love? about reading third acts like what do you love in third acts let me know in the comments below if you haven't done so already and you've been watching you're like this guy is crazy but he's informative and he's a little entertaining please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out uh real quick keep in mind that i do try to get some live Saturday videos in. Uh, you'll see the premiere dates on my homepage, uh, or more importantly, the uh, the page. And also through random posts. Uh, watch me outline stories in real time as I explain through examples and I speak about writing in general. I also go over certain techniques on live class, on the live videos, and I answer questions as they come. Keep in mind, keep in mind, uh, <clears throat> I won't be doing every Saturday, but my goal is to do every Saturday. Uh, and also with those Saturday lives, they will always be 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. However, they're live, but they're also recorded. So you can uh, re catch it during the week. However, if you want to participate, if you want to ask questions, if you want to uh, incorporate your ideas into the fun because uh, I take suggestions. I love suggestions. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Is that it? Did we? Is, are we done? What's going on? All right. As always, keep developing the right mindset. I'll see you next time. Okay. Bye. Love you.